All right, so I copied uh, the contents of the of the branch and uh, and I made some modifications uh, to from the example branch. Made some modifications uh, so we don't get ahead of ourselves. And so basically, uh, I copied that file that you saw earlier, uh, which will read the different uh, the different type definitions and will expose them uh, so we can get them in here uh, and then I created this resolver map function which just exposes an empty object because we said that we don't need any resolvers for our top level queries because uh, they don't do anything uh, other than calling from JSON API and uh, we are handling that uh, on the content.js GraphQL module. So, uh, so there is that uh, and then uh, we need to start up the server. Um, so we can do npm start. Um, the problem with npm start is that by default it starts it uh, as in production mode and in production mode we don't get some of the goodies uh, that uh, Apollo can bring. Uh, so um, we are going to stop this and start in development mode. So we're gonna do pm2 delete all and pm to start content CMS and uh, that started in uh, in development mode we can uh, make sure of that by doing show one of the uh, services the environment is development and we can do and to see that the uh, node, the node env uh, variable is set to development. Uh, so, yep, uh, it seems that that all our uh, workers are running. We have uh, eight process, uh, eight processes, because uh, my local machine can handle that due to the number of cores that I have in my CPU. So, uh, let's. Uh, cross our fingers and go into localhost 3000 because that's the port uh, you can see in the configuration here uh, we set the port to, to 3000 uh, and then we set GraphQL in here and it loads uh, which is exciting it loads in here uh, uh, let me show you where we specify that we should load in uh, this route. So what you see here is the uh, what is called the playground in Apollo, uh, which you probably used to something very similar called uh, graphical. It's it's almost the same. So I'm not gonna uh, teach you about GraphQL and syntax and uh, and all that because uh, there's many other resources probably better uh, or more qualified than me that can teach you that uh, so what i'm gonna do instead is i'm just gonna uh, click play here and uh oops seems that is something going on okay uh it says that the connection is refused on port uh 443 uh which is strange we don't have that uh, running there. So what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just remove this for a moment because I have a configuration issue as I want to figure out right now. PM2 restart all. I restart everything. And hopefully when I click here again, maybe I need to refresh this. Yeah, refresh. Hmm. For some reason, oh, this looks like no. no what happening there? Okay, 
I needed to uh, to compile my project because I'm using flow and that's a pre-step that happens automatically if you use uh, npm start so uh, yep there we go uh, you can see uh, you know everything that you would expect uh, you're calling the you're getting the title uh, the author because uh, we said with author equals true we could do you know get get fancy like that with variables you can see how it goes away you can see here uh, how much it takes since we are uh, calling this locally it takes very little time to do the IO in here uh, and uh, here we are only mapping so it takes like six microseconds which is nothing um, also you get all of the all of the good stuff uh, that that you can imagine if I do command and then click any of these it opens this in the in the schema and you can go and you know go deeper into into the documentation schema documentation uh, the playground is pretty nifty but the fact that we could write this query without having to do any of the resolving uh, it's pretty great because we are just taking making a JSON API query and transforming it into a GraphQL query uh, which highlights that in JSON API uh, despite uh, many of the GraphQL talks and the opening pitch that uh, GraphQL is fixing some of the rest problems you can see that JSON API can do everything that GraphQL can do, which is get the data that you need and only the data that you need in a single request. Uh, so next we're going to see, because right now uh, there is not much point in using GraphQL to do the same that you could do with uh, JSON API. So we are going to start building up all the things on top of uh, GraphQL that are additional to JSON, calling JSON API.